Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionaris, where medicine makes perfect sense, and today we continue our series called Labs. In the previous videos, we have talked about lactic acid, lactate dehydrogenase, but today it's time for lactoferrin. With that said, now let's get started. Lactoferrin nomenclature. What does lacto mean? Uh, from lactic, because lactoferrin is present in milk, whether it's breast milk, cow milk, etc. Ferrin. Anything that ends in IN is usually a protein. Yep, this is a glycoprotein. Ferric. Ferry, you remember the iron? Yeah, because this is part of the transferrin family. This is my labs series on YouTube. Please watch these videos in order. Today's video number 17. So here is the story Morning Glory. You know this? Yeah, this is my neutrophil. And neutrophil is one of the white blood cells. Can you be specific? Sure. White blood cells are divided into two big groups. Granulocytes, those cells that have granules, and non-granulocytes, or those who do not have granules. What are the granulocytes? Remember this mnemonic. Ben. And the most important one is the N. N for neutrophils. Why? Because it has some neutral granules. They are neither acidophilic nor basophilic. How about the E? These are the eosinophils. Eosinophils have eosinophilic granules. The B is basophils. Those have basophilic granules. The most numerous and most important one is the neutrophil. Here is your neutrophil. It's one of the white blood cells and therefore part of your immune system. This neutrophil, especially when it's activated, expresses something called lactoferrin. So whenever you see elevated level of lactoferrin, it means what? It means that I have tons of activated neutrophils, probably due to a bacterial infection. My activated neutrophils express lactoferrin. Imagine a patient with inflammatory bowel disease, such as Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. Or imagine a patient with Clostridium difficile colitis. Or a patient with Salmonella, Shigella, Campylobacter, Jejuni, etc. What all these patients have in common is a stinking inflammation in their intestines or bowels. Anytime you have inflammation, you have what? Neutrophils. If it's an acute inflammation, lymphocytes for the chronic inflammation, but no one cares about this. Let's imagine that this is acute inflammation. You'll have tons of neutrophils. Okay. If I have tons of neutrophils, they will have tons of lactoferrin. Eventually, everything that's in my bowels will end up in the stool. So if I can measure the lactoferrin in the stool, and if I found it to be elevated, it means one thing and one thing only. There are many neutrophils in my bowel, which means there is something inflammatory going on. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, medicosis schmeasy. My patient has abdominal pain and diarrhea, or abdominal pain and constipation, like abdominal pain plus any like abnormal bowel movement. Is this condition inflammatory or non-inflammatory? I'm not sure. Order the lactoferrin level in the stool. If you find it positive, well, that's an inflammatory condition. Example, inflammatory bowel disease or IBD. If you find no lactoferrin, it means it's a non-inflammatory condition such as IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. So IBD is not the same as IBS. IBD is inflammatory, IBS is non-inflammatory. You cannot objectively confirm the diagnosis of IBS. There is no lab test that will tell you that this patient has IBS. Similar conditions include fibromyalgia, thalamic pain syndrome, sympathetic dystrophy, etc. These conditions are real, but you cannot measure something in the lab that diagnoses the disease. To be or not to be, this is the question. To inflame or not to inflame, this is the lactoferrin. Okay, medicosis, let's assume that I am a normal subject. I'm not a patient. I'm not sick. Okay, what should be the normal level of lactoferrin in my stool? Uh, none. Zero. There should be no lactoferrin in your stool. Why? Because there are no white blood cells in your stool. Why not? Because you do not have inflammation or infection. Oh, by the way, I've added many social media platforms. You can follow me on any of these. Link in the description box. All right, lactoferrin baby. Let's say I have tons of lactoferrin in my stool. What does that mean? Well, it could be that I have inflammatory bowel disease. Okay, such as what? Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. Okay, it could be that I have bacterial enteritis, such as salmonella enteritis. What does enteritis mean? Enteritis means usually inflammation of your small intestine. Could be any intestine, but most of the time it's small intestine. How about inflammation of my large intestine? This is called colitis, your colon. Okay, I've never thought of it this way. Shut up. Campylobacter jejuni, Clostridium difficile or C. diff colitis or pseudomembranous colitis. 
more on that soon. But what if the patient is having a problem, however, the lactoferrin in the stool is negative? Well, this could be IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. It could be viral enteritis. Why? Because remember, which cells fight viruses? Well, it should be like lymphocytes. That's true, not the neutrophils. Uh-huh, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, medicine makes so much sense. Once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Parasitic enteritis. Why not? Who fights parasites? Well, usually the stinking eosinophils. Yep, not neutrophils. Oh, I get it. But remember, this is most of the time, not all the time. Some clinical pros for the pros. If the stool lactoferrin is negative, then stool culture is likely to be negative. Please do not order lactoferrin in neonates. Well, why not? Because mommy's breast milk contains lactoferrin. That's why we call it lacto for heaven's sake. Who could have imagined that lactation will give you lactoferrin? So this can give you a false positive test result. So you might deduce, oh, oh this, this baby is having a bowel infection or a bowel... Shut up, shut up. How about if the baby is drinking milk, but it's not mommy's milk, it's like cow's milk. Well, that's fine, it does not interfere with the test. But why not? Because this test has something like antibody, so it does not cross-react with the lactoferrin in cow's milk. It's called the human lactoferrin-specific antibody. Okay, if you want to measure lactoferrin in the stool, this stool sample got to be fresh. Imagine what Gordon Ramsay might say about this. And you should run the test immediately. Do not leave the stool there for five days. And, oh, I just forgot to run the test. Let me do it today. Nonsense. Don't forget to ask the patient not to mix the stool sample with toilet paper or urine or semen. You will not believe what these patients do. This... If you're asking about a stool sample, if you're asking about a semen sample, ask the patient not to mix the semen with soap. This will be useless. But, 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 hey, doctor, why not? Like, what's wrong with some my semen with some soap mixed with it? The whole reason we run the stinking test is to measure the content of your semen. But now the test can only measure the content of Dove, Kamei, or Irish Spring soap. Is this what you wanted? I want a clean, robust sample. Make sure that the stool sample is at least 5 grams. Let me paint a picture for you about a freaking gastroenterologist and his patient arguing with each other about the stool. Hey, I told you to give me more than 5 grams. This is like 3 grams. Oh, doctor, please don't yell at me. This is the only thing that I could get. Now go back to the toilet and give me some more. From my antibiotics course, medications that can increase your risk of pseudomembranous colitis, aka C. diff colitis or Clostridium difficile. Proton pump inhibitors can cause it. Tetracyclines can make it. Ampicillin can do it. Carbapenems, monobactam, and don't forget clindamycin. All of these can increase your risk of C. diff colitis. But what are the medications that can treat, not cause, treat? Your pseudomembranous colitis, all of them are modes of transportation. The metro, the van, and the FedEx truck. The metro, metronidazole. The van is vancomycin. The FedEx truck is fidoxomycin. Look at this great picmonic. Clostridium difficile is depicted by the classroom with differential equations. This bacteria is a gram positive. Here is an angel bacillus. Here is a rod. This bacteria can secrete toxin A and toxin B. Toxin A is an enterotoxin, toxin B is a cytotoxin. And by the way, when we try to diagnose this bacteria, we are looking in the stool for, not for the bacteria itself, but for the bacterial toxins. This bacteria can cause diarrhea, here is the toilet, pseudomembranous colitis, the pseudomembra, and toxic megacolon. You treat it with the mode of transportation, the metro and the van, metronidazole vancomycin. Here is the treatment of C. diff colitis. All right, let's do it. We have metronidazole, we have vancomycin, the oral one, and we have fidoxomycin. This is Linda. She's a nun. She represents clindamycin. And as you see here, clindamycin can cause pseudomembranous colitis. Learn about antibacterials, antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitic drugs by downloading my antibiotics course today at medicosisperfectionalis.com. You download it to your computer and keep it for you forever. And you can get a 30% discount towards anything on my website, just available for the next one student only. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my premium courses. Go to Picmonic for more than 1,000 pictured mnemonics. Thank you for watching. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.